Something from the sea is downright angry. Here's your look at the new NECA toys, The Fog, Toonie Terror's Captain Blake. Bring the fun of Saturday morning cartoons to your horror collection with these adorable little creeps. Pick your favorites, or collect them all, and make every day Toonie Terror time. Uh-oh. Here comes that fog that turns everybody inside out. Wait, what? Different reference. It was a different reference. Let me first just say, before we get a closer look at Captain Blake, I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that provided this sample of the new Toonie Terrors, the Fog Captain Blake, that we could have a look at in this review. Let's get some measuring going here. I'm going to bring in my ruler. I'm going to put it right to the very top of Captain Blake's head. And the figure is five and three quarters inches tall. Man, that works out to be about 14 and a half centimeters tall. The mob apparently demands size comparisons. Hey, you guys are awfully pushy. Let's bring in the previously looked at Harry Warden. Oh, Harry Warden's just a little bit taller, although really a lot of it is just his helmet. We can also bring in Victor Crowley, a too neat personal favorite of mine of the Toonie Terrors line. Let's also bring in Reagan. So it was a fun opportunity to bring in some of these different Toonie Terrors that we've looked at earlier, and here he is next to Bloodied Ash. He's about the same height as Ash, just maybe a tad taller. He's certainly a lot shorter than Victor Crowley, and he's a lot taller than Reagan. It's a couple of size comparisons for you. What seems now to be turning into a common trend here for the Toonie Terrors, let's bring in the package artwork that comes included with Captain Blake. You can see that you have movie-specific backdrops here, but they're sort of done in like an animated style, like an old 80s cartoon. You can take some scissors, I'm just going to mime it right now, and cut that out, and then you can display it behind Blake if you wanted to. Again, I don't personally do it myself, just because it occupies a lot more space than just having the figure on the shelf, but it does give you a little bit of extra wow factor when it comes to displaying the figure. What's interesting, though, about the packaging, if I can provide and actually reach around and grab it, is once again, they've thrown in these Easter eggs in the packaging. It's not as subtle necessarily as the minor we looked at earlier, but you've got the fog posters on either side. And now, the, again, the fog has... Is that the sound that fog makes when it comes in? It Yeah, it does. The fog has come in, and the poor ticket person, thank goodness, is inside the concession booth already dead. Because i got to imagine that fog would do numbers on him. Again, I think that's fun, the fact that they included that. I'm going to move that to the side. Let's look at the one accessory that comes included with Blake, and that's a sword. Now, they have gone back to the idea of putting that little bit of reflection there on the blade. And that's something that we started really seeing with the first wave of Toonie Terrors. And in some cases, they've dropped it off. They didn't do it with the Miner, for example, and they didn't do it with the bloodied Michael Myers. But I always like the fact that they include this little bit of reflection off the blade. It's on both sides. This does fit into his hand, but he only really has the one hand for the job. Because the other hand is actually for menacing pointing. Pointing pointing. The other hand, though, literally on the other hand, is actually designed for gripping. So you can just pry the finger slightly away from the palm because it's kind of difficult to get the handle of the sword in there without prying the fingers. You can soften up the plastic a little bit by heating in hot water. You can also run a few passes with your hair dryer, but I find at least the plastic is soft enough that you can get the handle in there because then the guard has to fit around the front of the fingers and just tighten it up a little bit. So you can have Captain Blake then wielding his sword. The neat thing about it, though, is that he also has a scabbard located on the side of his torso, which is basically just a sheath. Very carefully prying again the fingers because you want to get there the handle away from it. You can then take the sword and slide it into the scabbard. It doesn't really take up any more space than really what it did before. I mean, yeah, the handle sticks up a little bit, but it certainly is not going to impede the figure's articulation because really Captain Blake doesn't have it anyways in his torso. So again, if you want to just have him pointing, pointing, you can do that and just leave the sword in the scabbard for the time being. I think for the sake of not running the risk of breaking, I'm going to just take it out for the time. It's like a little tighter to actually pull it out than it is to slide it into the scabbard. Getting a closer look at Captain Blake's head sculpt. What a delightful looking treasure he is. He's gruesome, but he's gruesome in such a way that it's still believable that he can inhabit the world of a character like, like a world like Scooby-Doo. 
I always say this, it seems, when we look at these Toonie Terrors, that yeah, these characters look like they could be in an episode of Scooby-Doo. And I mean Captain Blake already. I'm sure there may have already been an episode or two or mini-movie where the gang came across a haunted ship piloted by a captain that looked maybe similar to lo looking like this. I really like the coloring that they went with for his face. Going with that off-violet purple and then going with the darker purple around the areas of his eyes. I love the look at the red eyes like this. He's got a few little notches there on the tops of his head. Very malnourished looking face. And I think sculpting the mouth open like this was the best thing they could have done. I mean, yeah, it would have looked just as good having the mouth closed, but I think it adds much more creep factor to this by having the mouth open. And it also gives you the opportunity to see these awfully discolored looking yellow teeth. Some are, as you can see, missing here. A really nice welcomed head sculpt here. I think they've done a great job on it. Uh, neat thing about his outfit, though, is the way they've sculpted the rags on his sleeves, the tattered sleeves. They've gone going straight out like this. I mean, it actually works better to having the arms out like this, because if you have them straight, it sort of looks like a good gush of wind is blowing the front of Captain Blake and causing the sleeves to shoot back behind him. I mean, really, the way that they're sculpted like this, they work the best by having the arms out like this as he's pointing pointing, pointing. And then again, you gotta, I guess, bring the arm, other arm up. And then that would explain why the sleeves drape like this. I mean, it's just as beneficial to have the arms like this, but you sort of know what I mean. It kind of looks like a good gush of wind is pushing it back like this. The sculpting of his outfit is really good. I like the coloring that they went with. The bright white works well with the black because the black really, really grounds the coloring of the figure. And of course, he's got his harnessed belt there, the strap that goes across his torso to hold the scabbard. Painted pretty good overall. There is a little bit of mess of paint there on the collar, but generally, for the most part, I think Captain Blake turned out really good here. And again, you've got lots of tattered tag, ragged tag co costume that he has here. The jacket, of course, has these little rips and tears in it. Instead of actually making the hole that goes straight through, what they did was they actually sculpted the hole and then painted it black. I guess that's the best beneficial way of sculpting it, as opposed to having to worry about sculpting a hole straight through it. It's got the pockets there, we can see on either side. And I just really like the look of him with his buccaneer boots here, with the little buckles on the sides. I guess they could also release this guy down the road as maybe a glow-in-the-dark option, as something that they could potentially do for like a convention exclusive. I think like a Captain Blake would work really well. They really haven't done many variants other than bloodied variants. Bloodied Ash and a bloodied Michael Myers, just to really name the only two I think that I can think of. But I think a glow-in-the-dark version of Blake would look really, really good on display shelf. Now, for the figure's articulation, you're pretty much going to get the same as what you would normally would get with Toonie Terrors. Regular, just stock head. The head is at least is on a ball joint, which is consistent with the Toonie Tears for the most part. There has been a few, I think, that have had just straight swivels, but most of them usually rely on a ball joint. And that helps to add a lot more when it comes to rotating, especially if you want to have him with a really low look like this as he's pointing. <laughs> I'm not going to keep doing that. So he does also you know, can rock the head back and forth. It kind of, in a way, looks like Bob Seger to me. Nobody young enough is going to really recognize that reference, but maybe some of the older viewers may. The arms rotate all the way around. Uh, he does have articulation also. So again, if you want, even asks if you even want to have him looking like he's bringing in his troops or even asking for spare change, you can also rotate the forearm this way as well. And that works the same on the smaller hand. I only say smaller because it's not sculpted the same way as the longer fingers on this hand, but that also rotates back and forth too. So swivel all the way around on this arm and swivel in the wrist as well. No waist articulation. Simply all of it is just sculpted together. No articulation in the legs, but at least he does have articulation in the boots. Blake, unlike the miner that we looked at earlier, doesn't have any problems standing whatsoever. And because of that, he doesn't really need a display stand, so the figure doesn't come included with one. And again, when it comes to displaying him, I don't think necessarily it's a case where the sculpting dictates the way that you have to pose it. If you really did want to have the arms down, by all means, you could certainly do that. I prefer, I think, when it comes to displaying Blake myself, I'd like, I think, to have Captain Blake with his arms up like this, warning those that would cross his path and that terrifying fog that would enter into the small town. That's, I think, the way I would like to display Captain Blake for myself. It's probably quite unlikely that we're ever going to get Captain Blake's crew as part of the Toonie Terrors line. 
In all the cases that we have got ourselves a Captain Blake, because there was that retro cloth release of him as well, it's only ever really been Captain Blake. And I guess really, if you think of the fog, you generally think Captain Blake, you don't tend to think of, oh, yeah, I remember that crew person that was standing to the one side of him. Captain Blake actually looks like a great looking figure from the classic, classic The Fog. We don't we don't tend to think of, we don't really want to talk even about the remake of The Fog. Where I praise the remake of My Bloody Valentine, I would say the complete opposite when it comes to The Fog remake. Horrible, horrible film. Potential certainly was there to remake The Fog to be a really creepy mo movie, and it ends up resulting not being that at all. Tom Welling, as good as he was in Smallville, he really wasn't good at all in The Fog, but I guess already the film was doomed to fail we don't ever really want to talk about the remake of The Fog. But we certainly can talk about how good the Toonie Tears release of Captain Blake looks. Once again, a very strong example of how well this would work in a Scooby-Doo world. I keep continuing to go back to the well of Scooby-Doo because you think ghosts, you know, you, you, you think of haunted environments. Scooby-Doo really is the first one that usually comes to most people's minds. Captain Blake, by far, would work very well in a Scooby-Doo world, being, of course, a captain of a haunted ship. Again, this probably already happened to several times already. Mining shaft, haunted mining shaft. Nobody's going to get this reference, but something we talked about in the review of The Miner. Did that ever happen in Scooby-Doo? I'm sure there's been hundreds and hundreds of episodes and movies of Scooby-Doo. There, there was a haunted pirate ship or a haunted ship or some something haunted that came from the sea. No haunted mining shaft. At least not that I can think of, at least. A big thank you, though, to the folks over at NECA Toys that provided, yes, the sample of the Toonie Terrors of the Fog, Captain Blake from the original Fog. We don't talk about the remake Fog ever here on this channel. If you guys are new to this channel and you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, you can do a couple of things for yourself, and one of which you can hit that subscribe button down below. The second, you can hit that bell notification so you get in those friendly reminders of whenever new videos are popping up. And then, of course, it helps periodically to come back to this channel and check the home page. If you did do the first one and you're pretty sure you did the second one, to reassure that things aren't missed, come back periodically to this channel and check the home page and see if there's any new videos on there that you didn't get those notifications for. Sometimes it does happen. We're going to be looking at more Toonie Terror reviews from the folks over at NECA Toys. And we are also going to be looking at some more NECA reviews. So there's lots of stuff coming your way. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.